That's just an introduction. The real video starts now. Hello. Mazzy here. Um, this is sort of a Mazzy's comp video. And it's a thank you to uh, everyone who watches my channel, as well as those who uh, have subscribed over the last year and a half or so. And um, I'm pretty touched and just actually surprised right now. I just woke up this morning and I hit uh, 2,000 subscribers. So that seems to be a milestone. Uh, and I'm gobsmacked. And you know I love that word gobsmacked if you've been watching for a while. I love the British term gobsmacked because it sounds so bizarre. Americans don't say that at all, except for me and one other guy who lives in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, I think, or something. Maybe a guy in New York, too. Maybe San Francisco, who knows. But anyway, gobsmacked. Um, this is, a, I'm gonna do a couple little videos, like pieced together. I've done a couple of these before. Uh, it's a thank you for 2,000 subscribers. That's why I'm doing it. I'm not doing a contest. There's a million contests going on, and I think uh, other people need to... Um, it's better when if, if they do the contest to get exposure, and uh, I'll enter as many as I can. It's hard to keep up, as we all know, but uh, I love that stuff, and I do appreciate all of you who uh, entered when I had my whack-a-mole contest. There will be whack-a-moles coming soon again, too. So um, I want to thank you for that. There are also a couple of VC things. Well, actually, one VC thing here now. Another one to come that hasn't arrived yet because um, well, I'll talk about that in a minute as we get into it. I'm going to show some uh, new records that I've acquired that I've picked up. Mostly new reissues, a couple of uh, used things. Um, it shouldn't be better organized here. Uh, but first, again, talking about the contests. I actually, on Sunday and Monday, I won two contests in a row, which I feel like Billie Eilish, when she won all those Grammys in one night, a little embarrassed by it. Uh, but first uh, and foremost, well, not foremost, because I don't want to slight the second and foremost, but first is Jeff Kempen's contest, his 7, 7, 70, 700 contest. Uh, random drawing, him and his wife uh, did a, uh, pulled seven slips, and the seventh one was a winner, and I was number seven. So, um, and I think there is a dilemma. Some people feel it's hard to, to get me uh, records. I do have a wish list on Amazon. I need to kind of update it, because I haven't in a while. But he sent me an inbox, and I sent him something that I had on my wish list, and I got it literally the next day, Amazon. Whatever you want to say about Amazon. But. Um, that's this album. This is the first Shins album. Now, I know the Shins. I have their third and fourth uh, albums. And for some reason, I never had this album. And my friend, the man to the archivist, worked for a short time back around when this album came out at uh, uh, Sub Pop Records in Seattle when she lived her full time. And she told me at the time, this is the one I need to get, because at the time, this was considered a groundbreaking record. Sounded nothing else like it at the time. Now you listen to it, you know, in context, 18 years later or 19 years later, uh, you can understand. Uh, in a way, it reminded me a band that I was into in the late 90s or around 2000 was Travis, the UK uh, British pop bands. Has that kind of melodic feel, very... Uh, Beach Boys, like Brian Wilson, Harmonies, but really, a, really a good record. So, um, I, this is, I think, a 30th anniversary edition, 25th, 20th, I don't even know. Beautiful blue vinyl. You know, I don't necessarily go for the uh, colored vinyl things. If it's, if it's colored, fine. 
You know, I don't think it sounds any uh, better or worse than a black vinyl record. Nice thing about a black vinyl, you can see if there's aberrations when you can't see on that stuff. But anyway, enough of that. Um, but thank you, Jeff. And, um, you know, Jeff's got an amazing channel. Uh, actually won something, I won some deep dish pizza from him last year also. So I'm kind of been, I've won four contests now. Well, actually that wasn't first place, but I don't think it was. I won B-Side Records was when I first started on the BC, a contest for her. And then the next day I get drawing and Elliot Cruz's uh, contest, I win. Talk about luck. I kind of jokingly, I actually bought a lotto ticket the next day thinking maybe three is a charm. I bought $10 uh, lotto numbers and I won $4, so I'm only down $6. So that didn't quite work out in the end. But hey, L.A. Cruz uh, donated uh, $50 to uh, the Musicians Charity Fund of uh, Musicians in Need, which I think is an amazing thing. And I think he's picking something out of his collection or some kind of string instrument thing to, uh, to send me. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, in terms of records now that I've um, picked up recently. If you haven't seen, I urge you, if you like jazz, to watch my Miles Davis video. Showcases my Miles Davis collection. And one record, of course, as I've said before on many videos, when you do the feature videos, you start realizing the records you don't have. What are you missing? And of course, everyone likes to write in, you know, oh, you missed this record, that record, and I totally get that. Uh, these things are never, rarely they, can they be a definitive overview of an artist. Um, although I probably could get into the Beatles quite a bit, but then there's always something I'm missing. But uh, this record I didn't have. I found it um, online, got it for $15. It's a 70s press, which I'm fine. I don't feel the need necessarily, to, unless I stumble across them, to get original pressings. You know the 70s Columbia. This is my day uh, working in record stores in Columbia. And this is uh, Files de Kilimanjaro. And, um, this is with the great second quartet with uh, Wayne Shorter, Herb Hancock, Ron Carter, and uh, the great, great, great Tony Williams. Interesting fact about this record, which is a lot of you may not know, the reason he called it Kilimanjaro, because at the time, Miles had invested in a Kilimanjaro coffee brand. So when you think about it, it was kind of like him doing his own marketing before marketing. I mean, I don't know if people actually knew that, so I'm sure it didn't necessarily sell coffee, but. Uh, way before the Peach Starbucks, uh, you know, coffee uh, thing, but uh, coffee beans. Miles Davis, marketing coffee beans. So, um, cool record. Chick Corea and Dave Holland are also on this for a couple cuts. Let's see, um, two cuts, you get uh, Dave Holland and Chick Corea replacing Ron Carter and Herbie Hancock. So. Um, Kind of a cool record. Liner notes by the great uh, jazz pop critic Ralph Gleason from the San Francisco Chronicle. So, um, highly recommended. Really good. I knew the record because I have it on compact disc, but I just hadn't, for some reason, the vinyl escaped me. The other one I picked up locally, uh, fairly inexpensive, was this. Um, you know, Pat Metheny and Lyle Mays. Lyle Mays uh, recently passed several weeks ago, or last month, I believe. And you know, Pat Metheny, this is ECM, when ECM was distributed at Warner Brothers, more of a fusion thing. Haven't listened to it. I used to have this back in the day, and then uh, this went with my purge, so it was $5, thought I'd pick it up. More jazz fusion records. Um, now, one CD set that I had pre-ordered literally last July and uh, please uh, look back uh, to uh, the Jazz Shit Brooks and I when we did a uh, Jazz Shit video at Brooks's place in San Francisco because he's a big collector of the Mosaic series of compact discs. Now Mosaic used to do uh, vinyl versions, limited vinyl versions also, but now they, they're more of a scale back company and there's issues with distribution, or they actually distribute it themselves, but there's issues uh, with manufacturing. There was a lot of delays in this album, but Michael Cascuna, uh, the great Michael Cascuna, who curates Blue Note quite a bit, put the Mosaic records together, but watch that to know more of the history and let Brooks tell you about his Mosaic collections. I'll put a link in here to that video. Uh, so those of you who are new can watch that if you're into jazz, compact discs, but they come in these 12-inch uh, uh, LP type box sets. But this is eight CDs and it's a complete Hank Mobley Blue Note session from 1963 to 1970. 
They're always um, black and white. And there's always a great booklet. You can see how the CDs are. Each one's a twofer, but great stuff. I mean, if you, you, you need to get some Hank Mobley in your collection if you're a jazz aficionado. And the stuff's coming out of Music Matters Jazz as well as Tome Poet and maybe some Blue Note 80s, but um, great trumpet player. And uh, I mean, you got Lee Morgan, Sonny Greenwich, Cedar Walton, James Spaulding, just a lot of great people. McCoy Tyner, um, Curtis Fuller. I said Lee Morgan again. Billy Higgins. Duke Pearson. Anyway, the usual suspects, Blue Note suspects with the great pictures from the um, Francis Wolf uh, photo collection that he did for Blue Note Records. So I love those. I don't have a lot of them. In fact, I showed cases before. The only ones I believe I have, I have the Tony Williams ones uh, from his solo stuff, which I have the albums from the 85 to 92 period. I have the great 18C box set of my favorite Nat Cole. Nat King Cole, I showed it in my trios video. And I also have um, uh, Django Reinhardt on uh, on that, on um, Mosaic. So Mosaic, it's not a record, but it's great music. I have, I'm not snooty about that. Now some records I picked up recently, a couple of these I may have crossed, referenced and showed, but um, Alejandro Escovito, uh, this is an amazing record. And this was a craft reissue that came out. I'm thinking, uh, well, last year, 2019. Um, this is a record he did in uh, 1996. Uh, Austin based uh, for the last 20 years plus, maybe, uh, maybe more than that, uh, relative to Sheila Escovito, Pete Escovito, the Escovito families, uh, cousins, fathers, brothers, sisters, all that kind of stuff. A member of kind of the uh, cow punk uh, genre of uh, music with rank and file who I used to see back in San Francisco in the 80s. He lived in the Bay Area for um, San Francisco uh, during uh, the early 80s, as I recall, late 70s, early 80s maybe. But this is a, a fantastic album. And, um, you know, if you know Kraft, how they issue these, oh, I'm sorry, this is not Kraft, this is Run Out Groove. So they do these, uh, these are the ones, I guess, they do the voting uh, where you vote on records. And I'm gonna show two things like that too. The other one is a non-such release. And I've showcased her before. One of my favorite artists of the last 25 years is Sam Phillips. Now this is a gorgeous record. Came out in 2001, produced by T-Bone Burnett, who was she was married to. T-Bone produced a bunch of her records uh, for Virgin Records, the incredible Wow, which I've showcased here. And, um, Martinis and Bikinis is probably maybe my favorite album, but when she went to Nonsuch Records, she did more organic. It has that great kind of thick, dirgy uh, music that uh, T-Bone likes to produce with acoustic instruments and different string instruments and percussive instruments, and it's very folky. I started out the video with a little a preview of this, uh, and uh, this is Fan Dance, and uh, just came out, search it out, Folky, intimate, but really gorgeous. I'm a big fan of Sam Phillips, uh, LA based. So, uh, highly recommended. And if, if you know my taste, if you like that kind of music, you like the folk stuff, but not, it's, it's got a little kind of modern indie, indie kind of, indie's for everything. We say indie for everything, right? Um, okay. The other thing that's really an interesting thing here, which I'm gonna take the shrink wrap off because I hadn't done it beforehand, David Byrne, the, the soundtrack, the soundtrack to his Broadway play, touring uh, performance, but they they're, they opened on Broadway for three months uh, late last year. They're gonna open again this fall, play again, um, I don't know if it's on Broadway or off Broadway, but it, it's a great David Byrne performance. It's called American Utopia on Broadway and uh, there's several Talking Head songs, a lot of solo stuff. Really a gorgeous record. I, Zimbra, This Must Be The Play, Slippery People, Once In A Lifetime, um, are from the Talking Heads. But look at that cover. What a beautiful curtain call that is, huh? Uh, 
this is also Nonsuch Records. I'm a big fan. Nonsuch does obviously the jazzy things. Uh, sort of, <laughs> they resuscitate old people's career in a way. I, I kind of joke about that, but think about it. They've had Ry Cooter, Randy Newman, um, Lori Anderson, David Byrne. They also do some great jazz stuff. Obviously, they're modern 20th century with Kronos Quartet, John Adams, uh, a lot of that uh, fusion jazzy stuff. Um, I think they, anyway, great label and really interesting, um, interesting label. Next, um, the only other four records I'm gonna show right now are the latest um, Tone Poet releases. Tone Poet, usually put out two a month. It's the archival uh, audiophile jazz, uh, higher end, higher end, but they go, you can get them for 26 to $34, depending on where you are in the States. I know there are a lot more, and they're gorgeously mastered from audio, um, excuse me, from analog uh, master tapes by Kevin Gray. And, um, but if you want an investment in jazz and you, you don't, can't find the original Blue Notes, which are crazy money, these are amazing. And they're, most of them are gatefolds with great pictures from the Francis Wolf collection. And the pictures only reflect the sessions. And uh, Joe Harley from Music Matters Jazz puts these together. The, the great uh, Nigeria by Grant Green. Stanley Turrentine. And this is uh, Coming Your Way. First Parlin, George Tucker, Hal Arwood, and Tommy Tarantino, his brother. I pretty much am collecting all these if I can, unless I have them in another form. I'm, I don't really double up on, on the jazz records, very rarely poppin' by Hank Mobley. And my very favorite, that to me is a, a, an amazing sounding record. I know there's been um, issues of this out on Wax Time and a few other kind of the gray market European labels that actually sound pretty good, but they're not from analog tapes. And a lot of, way, a lot of times those are basically ripped from compact discs. Um, but this, they got, Joe Harley and Kevin Gay got actually the original tapes of all the tracks from the Capitol Records. from. Um, and they never allow these out. But these original tapes, Chet Baker sings. Uh, now, 1956, uh, this album originally came out, and some people aren't a fan of his singing voice. It's like a whisper, it's like a, it's one of the sexiest records I own. And to me, it's an incredibly sounding record, very intimate, uh, romantic, just late night, early morning, like 3 a.m. record. Um, you know, put the kids to bed, make a martini, have a little scotch or whiskey or something, and um, watch Law and Order with the sound off SVU and listen to Chet Baker. And that's like a perfect night, unless you're with someone else. Then hopefully it'll be better. But seriously, um, this is an amazing sounding record. Quiet pressing, gorgeous. I can't recommend this enough. I, mean, I, I think you should go to YouTube, and uh, you're on YouTube if you're watching this, aren't you? You should listen to this music and see if you like it. I think it's amazing. And this is the pressing to get. I don't know, you know, they print, they, I think they press about 10,000 of these, this series of Tone Poets. But um, I tell you, tr great trumpet player, great kind of intimate jazz singer, it's, it's sexy, lonely music and gorgeous. Again, it's gonna be the best reissue this year, so far at least. I know we're only into March, barely into March, but uh, I think this is the best. The other stuff's all great stuff, but more what you expect. This is a very different record. So, you know, if it's not your bag, I get it. But I think this is an incredible, I can't recommend it enough. So we'll be back with uh, a little more of this uh, mix up after this. I'm doing a correction now before your heads explode and you kind of tell me, someone already probably put it in the comments as they were watching this, that I made a mistake. I know Hank Mobley is a sax, tenor saxophone player, not a trumpet player. I know I mentioned that he played the trumpet. I don't know why I said that. I was thinking of 
I don't know what I was thinking of. So the correction on this great mosaic box, uh, Hank Mobley, uh, the Blue Note series on mosaic, it's a compact disc box. He plays the tenor saxophone. Okay, happy now? Say good. I'd be remiss uh, if I'm doing a, a 2000th anniversary uh, subscribers episode. If I didn't mention the Beatles, I'm not gonna show any Beatle records, but since I'm in my office down here working today, and um, I'm just gonna pull a couple of my Genesis books. Now Genesis, I still wanna do a full on Genesis Beatle book video, and I will do that at some point when I have my shit together and um, I can showcase it. But um, Genesis is a British uh, publishing company, handmade leather bound art books and uh, historic books. They started out doing things like uh, Mutiny on the Bounty, Moby Dick, uh, back in the 1960s, I believe, into the 70s. And then um, Brian Roylance, uh, who was uh, the publisher at Genesis uh, in England, met up and hooked up with George Harrison. And uh, things got going and they convinced George to do a book. And it was the first collaboration that Genesis has, did, has put together a book with a pop artist, rock artist. Since then, they've done countless books, uh, Beatles, Beatle related, uh, Ringo's done books, uh, George Martin, Ravi Shankar, a lot of the photographers who worked with the Beatles, Astrid Kirshner, uh, on and on and on. They've done other books like uh, The Rolling Stones and Eric Clapton, and uh, did they do a Lou Reed book? I'm thinking Yoko Ono. Um, They've done other rock artists as well. I only collect the Beatle book. And um, this one at the time, I think these were about $250 at the time. This was 1980, 80, 81. Oh, look what I got here. I found it. My ticket to George Harrison at the Cow Palace. George Harrison, 1974, November 74. 8 p.m. The Cow Palace, no refunds, exchanges, Ticketron ticket. George Harrison, $9.50. I forgot I put that in here. Um, anyway, these are limited edition to I think 2,000 copies. I have number 196. This is signed by George Harrison. And it's basically his autobiography. It did come out on a trade version. Um, there's been several trade versions. This is the most recent that came out um, of that. But um, beautiful book. They're handmade. They have uh, things like letters and inserts and different cards and reproductions of lyrics and notes and letters, um, artifacts. Some of the later uh, books are more elaborate. They come in a slip case. I think these go for like anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 now. Uh, but a beautiful collection. Also have the two volumes he did of songs by George Harrison and it showcases his lyrics. This one's in a slip open case. This one uh, is also, this is number 1491, also signed by George Harrison. So, um, and then there's a volume two. I'm not gonna get into each one of that. Um, Derek Taylor's 50 Years Adrift. Derek Taylor was their uh, publicist, worked a lot with them, worked also with the Birds and uh, some of the American artists. He's the one that turned the Beatles on to Harry Nielsen. Um, 
Oh, this is a wonderful book. I think I showed at one point concert for George. I actually attended the concert for George. Uh, obviously, it's a posthumous release after George Harrison um, passed away. This is the uh, show at the World Albert Hall. You hopefully you've seen the video. If you haven't, you need to watch the video. Um, live in Japan with Eric Clapton. Uh, there's playback a George Martin book. <laughs> this is friggin' amazing. George Martin, uh, the producer. It's an autobiography. He's done several regular books. But this one, I mean, the, the, some of the designs on these get crazy. And that's why I need to do a separate video when I actually can use two hands and have a, an assistant sh showcase some of this stuff. So um, that was just a little um, overview of um, some of my Beetle uh, collection here. This is, I got this in Liverpool in the 80s. This is the Cavern Club home of the Mercy Beat. Uh, this is when the Cavern Club was torn down before Liverpool jumped back on the whole uh, Beatle bandwagon. So I got this there. Um, I forgot where this was a piece of brick from or something. I have a, actually do have another brick. Uh, this is the program that came in there, but the program that I got at the concert for George. There's my ticket. So I guess this turned into a little, like little George Fest, a little George Fest uh, for the 20th. Um, again, at some point we'll show, oh, piece of paint chipped off of Ye Crack, the pub uh, right across from the Cavern Club on uh, Matthew Street. This was actually chipping off and uh, David Bacon and I, who co-authored our uh, Beatles England book, uh, this was peeling off, so I had to grab it. So it's kind of like an artifact. Uh, this is from March, April 1980 is when we were there working on this project. And um, copy of my book, limited edition hardback. There were only a thousand of those. I only have uh, about 10, 11 left. And then there's, um, we did the American edition, there's a British edition, and there's a Japanese edition. So um, I'll close out just showing this edition. This is the Japanese edition that came out in 1982, 83. Anyway, um, there's gonna be one more segment, but thanks, uh, Vinyl Community. Again, I really appreciate um, all of you who watch. The, half of you subscribe, half of you don't subscribe, and it's okay not to subscribe. I'd love to have you subscribe just so you can um, uh, be aware when the, my videos pop up, but either way, I greatly appreciate the response and uh, that I've gotten here. So um, one more little segment after this, and then we'll call it a day a night, a hard day's night. So, and uh, just one more little update, uh, Discogs update. I talked a little bit about Discogs. Uh, those of you who didn't catch that, I do have a Discogs uh, uh, page, uh, Manhattan Man. It's basically Manhattan with an M stuck in the middle there. Manhat, two Ts, man, Manhattan Man. So follow me on my Discogs. Now, so far I only have my jazz, my entire jazz so far, is in Discogs. The top row is in Discogs, and the second row <laughs> up to, just in the middle of Bob Dylan, or actually, uh, yeah, I'm like partly through, halfway through Bob Dylan, is in Discogs, plus my box sets that are here and upstairs, new releases, uh, the Led Zeppelin box sets there. I don't know if you really care about that, so go see what the fuck is up there. <laughs> but anyway, thank you again. I, I can't thank you enough for uh, uh, subscribing and supporting me over this last year and a half or so. Um, here in my record room, we'll come back uh, maybe next week or the weekend or soon do another whack-a-mole. It's been a while. My last whack-a-mole was the uh, live or the whack-a-mole at Amoeba Records in San Francisco. So, uh, Mazzy loves you dearly. And we're going to close out with the Rolling Stones 2000, with 2000. And you know what that is, don't you? The Rolling Stone thing? God, look at the, I like the corners of this room.
<laughs> the record room. The record library. Anyway, um, Mazzy does love you. And, woo. Shine the light. Blinded by the light. Let loose like a goose. Now they're running in the night. Anyway, Mazzy loves you. And now, this. Well, we see, thank you again. Uh, I thought I'd play a song that has at least the words 2000 in it. From the great Satanic Medellin's request, Rolling Stones, uh, with a cover by Peter Blake, who also designed Sgt. Pepper. Photographed by Michael Cooper, who also photographed Sgt. Pepper. So the Beatles uh, copy the Rolling, excuse me, the Rolling Stones copy the Beatles yet again. <laughs> Psychedelic. Actually, I like this record a lot. Uh, a lot of Stones people aren't fans of it, but I think it's great. 2,000 light years from home. Thanks again, Vinyl Community. Mazzy really appreciates you all. Thank you. Enjoy. This is my dual turntable from the 80s. My office. Turning around.
Good night, Gracie.